Hello and welcome back to Lego City Undercover. This is BioEnchanted and today we are actually going to advance the plot a good chunk, despite this being a shorter video. But first, I just want to get this done while we're here. I actually failed this race a couple of times and had to cut those failed attempts out, hence the blink there. Because this race does something kind of odd with its route, where it makes it look like, or at least it makes it feel as though it's expecting you to take a certain obstacle that it's not actually needed. Now this race isn't too bad though when you know where you're meant to be going. This uh, car's a pretty good one, it handles fairly well. And it's a pretty good looking car as well, like the uh, way the colours kind of pop. Here it gets kind of weird, you have to kind of like, you think you'd go to the house but you actually don't, they'll take you completely the wrong direction and completely misalign you from the rest of the track. As you can see, we have much less time than the last time we did these. Uh, not quite unfairly little at the moment, but uh, yeah, that was a close one. I learned we're wasting quite a lot of time because I misunderstood where I wanted me to go next. That can be a problem with these races, is if you misunderstand where it wants to go next. And here, very obviously, the game expected me to have something there that I didn't have yet. So that was kind of amusing to me. Don't worry, this is the only driving section, or at least this is the only optional racing section we're doing in this video. So last video they did kind of drag on a little bit. But we're nearly done with this now. We just need to complete the circuit. Which is actually right here. These are the ones actually often have a different finishing line. That's the first of many of a few time trials completed. We've unlocked the Lantos. Also, while we're here, you may realize there's something else we can do down here. Finally, it spawned. So we can finally build this train station. It was really annoying for me to find these weren't here before. <laughs> I thought it would have given it to me so much sooner, but it didn't. But now we have the train station, we can get where we need to go much quicker. Again, these are very useful for that. So here we are, we, need to, we just need to get back to the uh, police station. But on the way, let's do something more visually interesting than normal. Let's actually do one of these. 15,000, not overly expensive. And it's a very colourful one as well, I quite like the look of this fountain. It's very elaborate, very well put together and still made of the usual Lego bricks as well, which is probably impressive for such a comp complex object. Of course, from now you also get a character token, which is nice too. I quite like that so a lot of the optional uh, things can be very interesting, like, so they can be the most, some of the most visually interesting things to build in the game, when they're optional. And they can often be very colourful and very elaborate and very interesting. But in ways that feel like you could potentially, if you could get a good enough look at them, and they had the right parts, potentially build one yourself. <laughs> so finally, let's use this and get to uh, Modi Luca and break him out of prison. As the game wants us to do. The usual route to King's Court. Because of course, as well as the word king, it also has the word court in it, so you can kind of tell it's going to be where the courthouse is. This vehicle is moderately slow and a little cumbersome, but it's not as bad as the rugged, for example. Because it's, uh, well, it's a little more top heavy, that makes it a little. I wouldn't say a little more stable, I'm not really sure quite how to compare it, but it's a decent enough vehicle, it's nowhere near as bad as the other police transport vehicle we had earlier. That was me showing off that, of course, the uh, clicking the L stick results in the honking the horn, or if you're in a police vehicle, turning on the siren. But from this point on, I will be cutting these routes out, when they're this long at least. 
this will be the last time we'll have to watch this kind of massively long trail. I'll also be cutting out the uh, most of the vehicle uh, theft sections because they can get obnoxiously long as well. So I'll only be showing the beginning and ending of the routes on those. However, chases and races will remain intact because they can be very interesting with the routes required to take. But I think now we have a good enough idea of how this island's put together. That this kind of showing the route will no longer be fully necessary. Unless, of course, new shortcuts come to pass, which of course they will. This ain't the last you've seen of Moda Luca. I can do this sentence standing on my head. Thanks to my circus train. There's the paperwork. We won't be seeing Mo DeLuga back on the street for at least eight years. Thanks to those parking tickets. Another job done and the final day of my 36 year long career finished. And all without a single blemish. Hey Pat, I'm here for Mo DeLuca. Here, of course, I actually failed this one, hence the cut. And the fact that it starts you with it. That's one thing I don't like with this, hey, is when it when you fail you one of these missions, there, it Mr. gives DeLuca? you... I ain't talking to you. Just shut up and take me to Albatross. If you insist. But I don't really work for the prison. So we can go somewhere else if you like. What? Oh, man. I know Benny come through for me. What's your name, kid? Chase. Don't know you? Don't care. Take me to the usual hideout. Actually, I work for Chen Chuang, but I'm sick of it. I arranged this escape because I want to work for a real criminal. Ha ha! Shows you got guts, Chase. Cedar Street, that's where the hideout is. Looks like they figured out what I'm up to. This might get bumpy. If it gets me out of an eight year stretch, you can make it as bumpy as you like. I'm Dodge Cox will get into his safe house. I quite like Mo. he's a fairly friendly guy. What I was going to say there before I was interrupted by the plot... Uh, ...is the uh, meter in the top left, uh, the boost meter, if you're driving a vehicle that has one and you fail a story mission, when you restart the mission it actually empties the meter and you have to wait for it to fill the way up, which is a little annoying. But I like Mo, he's a very affable character, although a little unrealistically naive, considering he just accepted the fact that Chase was working for a rival gang. But yeah, he is very weirdly trusting for Mafioso, but there we go. Well, for the cousin to a Mafioso anyway. <laughs> Getting close. So, do you really want to jump ship to Vinny's crew? Yeah. So we can do shortcut now. Huh. I might be able to swing something. I mean, you're good with me, kid. But Vinny, he's another case altogether. You're gonna have to do something really special to get in with him. Whatever it takes, Mr. DeLuca. And here we are. Uptown. This is a fairly straightforward route, that one. It's a fairly simple mission, this. It's not particularly difficult to avoid the police officers, although uh, the last time I failed it because they tipped me over in Pagoda, where I got rammed by a good chunk of them. A lot of them spawned in Pagoda very quickly, and one of them ran me from the side and tipped the whole vehicle, which was annoying. Come around the back and let me out. Not sure that's really necessary right now. Thanks. Mo! You escaped! We was just formulating a plan to bust you out of Albatross for Vinny! Too late. This kid beat you to it. Now get rid of that truck. Thanks, Chase. I'll be in touch.
And there we have it. We have a friend in a new gang. Hey, Chase. Always nice to have. I think I found your in with my cousin Vinny. That was fast. What is it? My brother-in-law works at the airport. Said they got some shipment of fancy high-tech gizmos in from a security company out east. I know for a fact that Vinny would really like to get his hands on them. And how do I get my hands on them in the first place? Ah. Okay. I don't usually like to do jobs myself, but you did me a real solid back at the courthouse. So I'll help you out this once. Meet me in a car park south of the airport. I'll get right over there. I'm not a fan of this collectible here because these four are all over this district. That is kind of annoying to find. That's why I got that one now, so I wouldn't forget where it was. Because unlike for the most part where they're kind of around a particular set of blocks or in a kind of a circuit you can follow, those ones aren't nearly as easy. That will be coming in very handy later though, that particular building. Keep that in mind. We just need to head to the airport, which is fairly close by, so let's head over there and see what he wants to do for his brother-in-law. I like the DeLucas, they're an interesting family. And they have some fairly interesting friends as well. Chan is amusing, but DeLuca is generally more likeable, but we'll see them shortly. And here we are. Let's see what Mo wants us to do. I hope Mo doesn't take long. Hey, Chase! I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Not at all. This car is for you. It belongs to my brother, who I don't get on with. So feel free to damage it. Don't worry. With my driving, that's a guarantee. Whoa! And that's the truck you gotta stop. Get in the car! This mission is actually fairly interesting because it does something very different to what a lot of these kind of missions in these kind of games would do. That was unfortunate, but luckily I was able to catch up as I was cutting across this car park. This truck is luckily fairly slow and they've actually given us a surprisingly nippy vehicle to go after it with. So let's try and keep up with it. Zoom. That was misleading, it was going this way all this time. Cheeky truck. I think it knows it's being followed. Luckily got hung up on that taxi there. <laughs> this can be a little tricky because again, this truck actually moves surprisingly quickly. You know, like a lot of these there seems to be some kind of rubber banding going on where you just have to kind of hope you get lucky and hope the driver screws up. Otherwise it can be a real nightmare to catch up with them if you can't take many corners. Luckily this route gives us plenty of corners to take. And because it's a big enough vehicle we can kind of stick to it a little bit and do a lot more damage than we normally would do a lot quicker. I normally stop it around here on Blackwell Bridge. Or a little bit after, but around here is generally where I stop it. But yeah, even when boosting, it, can, it has trouble keeping up, so I think it may actually be that uh, there's a bit of overbanding going on that's causing these to be a lot harder than they really should be. There we go, finally, we've taken care of the truck. I was long overdue a career change anyway, so thank you very much. You're actually doing me a favor. I was stuck in a rut in that place. I'm gonna pursue my dream of becoming an accountant. Is anyone still listening to me? Like him stopping, panting, exhausted. I've never actually bothered to listen to his whole thing before. I've been speaking with the mayor's office, and she says you can do whatever you need to and charge any costs to the department. Whatever it takes to catch Rex Fury. Your timing couldn't be better. I just took a delivery truck without permission. Don't worry. I already started a tab for you after Frank told me about the car you took for Chan. Frank actually passed that on? I'm impressed. Well, he was going to try asking Santa, but he checked with me first. I think he's starting to learn from his mistakes. I kind of feel proud of him. Hmm. I'll keep you updated if I have to take anything else, Ellie. This is actually interesting because most of the time when you do a trash the vehicle and take the vehicle mission, the vehicle stays trashed, but here, it actually refills the health meter, which is very kind of this game. 
something I would have liked if GTA 3 did that, but unfortunately that has that really annoying mission where you have to go to the armored car. Uh, that's what I kind of compared this mission to because I hated that mission in GTA 3. It was so annoying because you had to completely trash the armored car and make it like on the cusp of exploding and then escape the police, which was a complete nightmare. So happily this game takes mercy. And allows you to at least start the driving with still damaged truck, but it just gives you more health, which is a nice kind of compromise. But yeah, this truck actually isn't as bad as the one that you're driving uh, for the police earlier, because it seems much less top heavy. To be fair, I think it's because most of the uh, caboose, or whatever you'd call that, uh, the trailer of it, is missing. Uh, got a bit trainy there, but uh, it definitely feels like it controls much smoother than the police vehicle does from earlier in the game. That's like the one vehicle I have the most trouble with in this entire thing, is that police vehicle. But yeah, the size of the truck and the fact that you can't boost can make it somewhat tricky if you don't preempt what the police cars are going to do. The best way to deal with these kind of missions is actually to drive outside the traffic, just around here, just at the edge of the pavement. So that you can always have some cars between you and the police, which is always useful. Vinny Papalardo ran the biggest gang in Lego City. And now, he wanted to see me. His ice cream parlor was a gathering place for local hoodlums. There was Tony one time. So-called because he said everything once. Hey! Polly blindfolds. No, tell him I can't see him today. Lucky Pete. Good to see ya! Whoa! Hey! I found the penny! The crayfish twins. <gasps> Sorry! Wrong table. And Mikey spoilers. Check it out. When you get to the space center, you can knock down a planet from the ceiling to get a secret item. I'm here to make you laugh? You think I'm funny? Funny how? Uh, uh, uh I'm sorry, boss. I didn't Get mean to- Get out of here and unload that truck! Uh... <coughs> hey, you must be Chase. You come highly recommended. I won't forget what you did for my cousin. Oh, ignore the clothes, kid. It's my boy's birthday. I wanted to give him a nice surprise, you know? I've been looking forward to getting my hands on the stuff you got me for some time. They're called color guns, and they're of particular benefit to the less than legitimate fraternity. You know, us guys. Now, I need someone to see if these things really work by stealing the Bell Pepper Emerald from the Lego City Bank in downtown. You want to put one through its paces? Well, I've come this far. That's right. And don't worry about how to use it. I'll have a read through these instructions and phone them through to you. Good luck, Chasey. This is perhaps the most versatile upgrade the game gives you. There's so much you can do with these guns. It's ridiculous. Most of the character tokens in the game at this point are actually found through use of the color gun. It's ridiculously useful. But not in this form. Of course, here we actually have to kind of switch disguises to bring it out. We're trying to bring it out now to show it off, but it's just not having it. But that's because you have to switch first. I'm about to break into a bank vault. Uh, which one? The Lego City Bank in downtown. No problem. You need any help getting in? Sure. Okay, right. There's an entrance to the sewer in the gardens opposite the bank. Whoa, wait. Sewer? I can't just walk in the front door? It's a bank vault. The only way in is via a ventilation hatch on top of it. And the only way to that is via the sewer. Did you expect a red carpet? No. Fine. Thanks, Ellie. 
New level coming up. Now we need to break into a bank. Look forward to that. I'll see you then.